so why was Austin Steinbart arrested by the FBI? Yeah, I know, like, all the reasons, yeah, whatever, yeah, 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 yeah. I get it, but, I mean, he basically just created a, his own digital reality, right? I mean, let's say he's Q, let's say he's not Q. I'm not going to say he is or he isn't. In theory, we could all be Q, right? It's just how much of a, an impression you put into the to the macabre, right? Perhaps, you know, how, how far back into the rabbit hole can you go and how much time do you have to live on the planet to deal with all this madness? But what happened to Austin Steinbar, right? He was just like, maybe just like this digital um, personality, right? And they came after him and the FBI really came after him. And, you know... It, it makes me think that the FBI could come after any of us, right? They could come show up at our doors and look at our at our computers and take our our things away, abduct us, and hold us for days, right? Huh, it's pretty it's pretty out there. Really, there's nothing to hide. I mean, you know, anything that we're saying or, or talking about and theoreticizing about is is not classified you know we're only talking about um, declassified programs actually and they put all the information right out in front of us so we're talking about you know general knowledge that most of the public doesn't know about but they can learn they can research they can see what's going on but the but the biggest thing I think about you know Austin Steinbart and where he was coming from was and this is a long game. This is a, a game that goes back into the past and past proves future and future proves present. And like when you do turn on the, the television today and they're playing the next season of, you know, absolute space Minecraft on your brain, you know, right there in the, in the television screen and your, and your four-year-old's playing um, Battlefield or, or Minecraft or... I don't know what the kids play these days. Um, <laughs> I don't have kids, <laughs> but you know, I know that I know that they're playing these video games. They play all these video games. They're playing Minecraft and and Sonic the Hedgehog and and what's the one? What's the one? I'm gonna think about it. But whatever, you know, they're, they're, what what's what's to make that reality? I, I digress. I'm gonna have to edit this out. But what, what it means is, you know, we're all being pushed into this digital world. And this is where the the next frontier of warfare is. It's on this digital plane. You know, it's who can control the narrative. Hollywood has shifted the narrative for so long. And they've controlled what we see. They control how we feel. They control how we interpret information. Hollywood made money off of war. They filmed all the wars. They... They have footage of it. Now, after 20 years and 50 years, they bring it all back up and they show it to us again and we watch it and we pay for it. And You know, people died and millions of people died for us to sit in our living rooms and just watch it. And so that's kind of how they act and operate and they would do it all over again. This time, you know, we've got the internet. We've got, um, we've got YouTube and we've got um, just all these different platforms. We've got these video games that we play. And we've got different channels, different avenues that we plug in. And so Hollywood doesn't have such a hold over the reality, but the reality is like bro broken up over a lot of different streams, if you catch my drift. But nevertheless, you're still plugged in. And if that's what it's coming to, you know, if you can't escape it, then you live it. And most people don't have a problem of living it. They live with their cell phones. They have, they have um, like a little emojis for themselves. They communicate in memes, and that's just the way things are becoming. We're becoming more attached to our computers and our smartphones and this and that, and, and we want the technology to be better. We know that it's going to be better, and pretty soon it's going to be all linked up. Elon Musk has talked about this. You know that he wants to, you know, put the computer right in the brain, and and I mean I've, I saw that stuff on this road. And, since I was two years old, you know, connect the dots. The trees are fractals. The 
the air is just molecules dancing around. We're all connected to the grid. You know, we're just waiting for the technology to catch up to us. So when it does, you know, when the technology catches up to itself and then it references these other points within the quantum spectrum of what it is, the, the internet and it deciphers, you know, the internet never forgets. You know, anonymous, you never forget. Once it's on the internet, it's there. And it can be dug up and it can be pulled, uh, examined, it can be misconstrued. And also, you know, now the era of fake news, you can pretty much create whatever you want. But I mean, I know I'm not an AI, so I'm just speaking to you plainly. But what I'm saying about Austin is if he got challenged by the FBI, then what assurances do we have that we're not going to be challenged just for our thoughts, for our for our actions, for the things that we post, for the ideas that we have, you know, because in a, in, in, along those lines of thinking, you know, when I'm projecting in my mind, in my reality, I'm thinking, wow, you know, 50 years in the future, I'm on a spaceship somewhere out in deep space, you know, and I'm just tapped back in and this is all time travel. Why not? Why couldn't it be? You know, if it's my video game, that's what I'm going to say it is. You know, I'm just here on Earth collecting data like um, Bruce Willis and the 12 Monkeys. You know, what else What else is there to do? We're in lockdown. There's like quarantine. You have to look at things different. And um, part of a part of a deep, a deep space, secret space program, you know. Not the secret one, the good one one of the good guys like the new space force that's what I'm talking about work for the space force you know because either you work for the space hey, let's cut the crap all right the Chinese hacked our technology they've been spying on us for years okay the last administration sold us out sold us down the river they've been looking at us they they know everything they Mark Zuckerberg is uh, has no authority with them. I mean, they, they run him like a puppet. All these guys, they do. You know? And we finally took it back. And if you listen to Q, I mean, I, I should say, if you don't know who QAnon is, and I don't know all about the stuff, but if you don't know who he is, then none of this is going to make sense to you. But if you do, then... You know, you know what exactly what I'm talking about. So, think how it helps, think of how it distracts, and think what it really could mean in the future. You know, say he's telling the truth. Let's just say he's telling the truth for a minute. That it's um, like some think tank on the inside of a, of a laboratory somewhere else, but it's all decentralized, right? Because we're all in our own little think tanks, and and the algorithm triggers us and it pulls us all into, you know, one kind of equation and we're, boom, we're fully operational, like into the matrix. Does it sound that hard to imagine that like the US military and the space program couldn't conceive of some kind of a plan to do something like that? Crowdsource from the general public just to gather information? Oh my gosh, that sounds so, so conspiratorial, but well, I'm back in town now. I'm going to check it out. It doesn't look like it's too locked down. We're going to see what we got. And that's kind of, you know, the thoughts I was having today. And somebody else on my um, comments said, you know, the higher vibration and all that stuff. Who are you listening to? Yeah, who do you, be careful who you follow. Yeah, 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 I get it, you know. I get it. I follow myself, you know, and I check out other people and, and, I'm just trying to share information and I'm not good at this. I'm not the best at all this stuff. You know, I don't have a studio. I don't have a team of people following me and and I don't want me stuck in a computer all day, you know. Make the technology better so I don't have to. Just tap it straight into my brain, Elon. But whatever, you know, I mean, that's all good too. We'll get there. Um, just as long as it's for world peace. And so one lady was saying to me, you know, the higher vibration that you're talking about, you can't meditate because, you know, you're going to attract the demons. Like, the only true vibration is through Jesus Christ. And, and well, she's right. You know, I mean, 
and in a certain regard she's right it's called christ consciousness and i want to elaborate on that further but i want to do some more reading on it but so that i don't sound like an idiot when i'm talking about it but it's true you know when you can believe in whatever you want to believe in and you can read the bible and i and i have never read the bible and and it's kind of ironic that all of these things are happening around the bible right now it's the times we're living in are biblical i mean i'm learning the bible just through watching real life and having people say yep there it is right there right there in the bible and um but back to christ consciousness you know it's are, are you going to treat people the way you want to be treated and nobody's perfect and we can't cast judgment and and the only way to the next level is the true compassion and love forgiveness so she's absolutely right so when you close your mind and you're trying to go to these places and lift your vibration you know think of think of like a, a the jesus vibration because that's as good a place to go as any right so i hope we just uh cross some bridges there with everybody and we're all back into the anecdotal handshake coronavirus free lifestyle peace and hair grease